Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling lead code problem, 1161, maximum level sum of a binary tree. This is a great problem for practicing tree traversals, and while it's marked as medium, once we break down the logic, you'll see it's actually quite straightforward. We'll explore a couple of ways to solve it, focusing on how we visit nodes layer by layer, versus diving deep. Let's get started. First let's understand what we're being asked to do. We are given the root of a binary tree, the problem defines levels very simply. The root is at level 1, its children are at level 2, their children are at level 3, and so on. Our goal is to find the level 10, where the sum of all the values of the nodes at that level is the highest possible. We have three main steps here. First, we need to calculate the sum of node values for every single level in the tree. Second, we compare these sums to find the maximum one. And third, there's a specific tiebreaker rule. If two different levels happen to have the exact same sum, and that sum is the maximum, we must return the smaller level number. So if level 2 and level 4 both have the highest sum, the answer is 2. Let's walk through this example to visualize it. At level 1, we just have the root node with a value of 1. So the sum is 1. Moving down to level 2, we have nodes 7 and 0. 7 plus 0 gives us a sum of 7. Finally, at level 3, we have 7 and negative 8. 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. Now we look at our totals, 1, 7, and negative 1. The winner is 7, which happened at level 2. So, we return, 2. Before we code, let's talk about a common trap. Notice that the tree nodes can have negative values. This means the maximum sum itself could be negative. If we initialize our max sum tracker to 0, and the actual best sum is negative 5, our code might incorrectly think 0 is the answer even though zero was never a sum we actually calculated. To fix this, we always initialize our maximum sum variable to negative infinity, or the smallest possible integer, ensuring that the first real sum we calculate will overwrite it. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, because it's very readable for logic. But don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video. The logic remains exactly the same across all of them. The first approach is the most intuitive one. Since the problem asks about levels, it makes sense to traverse the tree level by level. In computer science, we call this breadth-first search, or BFS. The idea is simple. We use a queue data structure. We put the root in. Then, while the queue isn't empty, we look at everyone currently in the line. That's one whole level. We sum their values, check if it's a new record, and then add their children to the back of the line for the next round. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leak code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to do, specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent, which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel, you're trying to improve. So this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use, core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. All right, here's the full Python code for the breadth-first search approach. It follows the standard template for level order traversal. Take a quick look, and then we'll break it down piece by piece on the next slides. First, we set up our variables. We have max sum set to negative infinity, as we discussed earlier, to handle negative node values correctly. The ants variable will hold our final answer, which is the level number. Level tracks which depth we are currently exploring. Then, we initialize our queue, using a decway in Python is efficient, and kick things off by adding the root node to it. This is the engine of the solution. While the queue isn't empty, we enter a new level. We immediately increment our level counter. Then, we start a sum specifically for this current level at zero. The crucial part here is the for loop. We iterate exactly the number of times equal to the queue's length before we started adding children. 
This ensures we only process nodes belonging to the current level. For each node we add its value to our running total. And if it has left or right children, we push them into the queue to be dealt with in the next iteration of the while loop. After we finish processing an entire level, we check our score. Is the sum at current level strictly greater than our max sum? If it is, we have a new winner. We update max sum to this new value and record the current level as the answer. Notice we use strictly greater than. This handles the tie-breaking rule automatically. Since we visit levels in order, 1, 2, 3, if we find a sum later that is equal to the max, we simply ignore it, keeping the answer as the earlier, smaller level number. Now for the second method, depth first search, or DFS. Instead of finishing one level before moving to the next, we dive as deep as possible along each branch. But how do we track level sums if we're jumping between levels? We can pass the current level as an argument in our recursion. We'll maintain a list where the index corresponds to the level. So index 0 holds the sum for level 1, index 1 for level 2, and so on. Every time we visit a node, we just add its value to the correct bucket in our list. Here is the code for the DFS approach. We define a helper function called DFS that does the heavy lifting recursively. We started off at the root with level 0. After the recursion fills up our list of sums, we simply loop through that list to find the winner. Let's look closer at the recursive logic. Inside our recursive function, we first check if the node is null. If not, we look at our list of sums. If the length of our list is equal to the current level number, it means this is the very first time we've reached this particular depth in the tree. So, we append a new entry to the list. However, if the list is already long enough, it means we've visited this level before via a different branch. In that case, we simply find the existing sum at that index and add the current node's value to it. Then, we continue the journey to the left and right children, increasing the level by one. So how do these solutions perform? Both approaches have a time complexity of big O of n. This is because we must visit every single node in the tree exactly once to check its value. You can't skip any nodes. For space complexity, both are also big O of n. In the BFS approach, our queue might hold the widest level of the tree, which can be roughly half of the nodes. In the DFS approach, our recursion stack takes up space equal to the height of the tree, which in the worst case, a straight line is n. So both are efficient and linear. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down step by step, but the logic is identical to the BFS approach we just discussed. Just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Here is the full solution in Java. We use a linked list as our queue implementation. Remember to use integer men value for initialization. Feel free to pause here. Next up here is the C++ version. It's very similar, using the standard queue from the standard library. Again, notice the use of intmin. You can pause to review the syntax. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. We use a simple array as our queue, using push to add and shift to remove from the front. Hopefully, seeing it in different languages helps solidify the concept. So to wrap things up, we learned that for any problem involving tree levels, breadth-first search is usually the most natural fit, though depth-first search works perfectly fine if you track the depth. We also reinforced the importance of initializing variables correctly to handle negative numbers, a very common interview bug. Both methods are optimal, so you can pick the one you are most comfortable writing. Also, if you're looking for even more Leet Code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leet Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leet Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code. It really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.